Hello and welcome to Performance Check. My name is Rob and uh, this video is going to be about um, character motivation within your role-playing game. Now, I'm guessing if you've clicked on this video, you probably have some concept of what character motivation is. Uh, it is an agency or driving force which causes a character to act in a certain way. Um, so I'm going to take a few examples of motivations and discuss how you can present them in your game and how they can help you key in on particular characters and NPCs that are in your game uh, to best effect. So to examine uh, a motivation of a character, we must first, of course, choose a character, uh, an NPC, and what better character to examine for motivation than the villain. <laughs> I'm not using the voice again. So, uh, I think the villain is a really great place to start. Villains usually have really interesting motivation because they're doing something a little bit out of the ordinary, whether it's trying to conquer the world or it's trying to raise an undead army. I'm going to discuss a particular villain that I used in a very early campaign that I ran of D&D. And uh, let's go from there. I'm going to tell you uh, about a necromancer. And his name was Dragon Then. Now, Dragon Then's motivation is that he wants an undead army. That's his goal. That is what's driving him. Now, like any decent necromancer, Dragon Then has the ability to raise people from the dead. However, he wants an army. So, he goes about constructing a super weapon of necromantic energy known as the Shroud. And the Shroud... Well, it can raise thousands of people from the dead all in one go. But where's he going to get thousands and thousands and thousands of dead bodies to raise for his undead army? Well, Dragon then incites a war between two neighbouring kingdoms. A war that will cost thousands and thousands of lives. And then, when the time is right, he can look to the Shroud and it's dark business will be done. Now you see, uh, Dragon Fen's primary motivation is that he wants an army because he wants to take over with this army. However, his motivation is also leading down the path of him needing to incite a war. So it begins to sprout like a tree, like a tree of evil. And yeah, that I find that that kind of thing is quite interesting. And the way you can write that is obviously it's pretty simplistic. You go from one to the other. But then, how do you perform that? How do you how do you uh, let the players know that without giving the game away, you know? How do you uh, operate this NPC without saying, this is my motivation, this is exactly what I'm going to do? Well, this is what I'm going to try and help explain. So, Dragon Fen is going to need to get this, uh, this war underway. So, what better way to do that than to have influence in one of these kingdoms' royal courts? Now... The thing I find with motivation, the best way to do it is by not showing their motivation. Sounds stupid, I know, but as a villain, they generally want to keep their motivation very secret, but you can portray it in a number of ways. For example, if he's having influence in this court, if he's doing this all in secret, he could be all like, Well, my lord, I would advise we strike at Eldarium. Their forces have infringed upon our borders for too long. We must send a message. A message of strength and defiance. Now, to the old-looking player characters, I mean, this guy, Dragon Fen, it just seems like he doesn't like Eldarium very much. And, yeah, sure, if they're infringing upon the borders of this, uh, this realm, Orinthal, then sure, they, they have every right to go to war in that case. And thus... You then have a layered performance from Dragon Fen. On the one hand, he's saying one thing, but on the other, he wants something entirely different. So, what has that achieved? Well, Dragon Fen now has fully fleshed out motivation. Some of it the players will know, some of it they won't. But it's using both of those and using that as a template as to how that character will act in your games. You can't go wrong. He will always seem authentic and he will always seem driven 
and they will always seem to have agency. And that's all you need. And when it comes to actually performing the character, you just need to keep that in your mind whilst you're talking to the players. I think that's all there is to it. I think. So hopefully I've explained reasonably well um, how you can include fully fleshed out motivation uh, for your characters in your games. Um, and thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed what I've been saying, then by all means, um, sh please share your thoughts in the comments. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you liked what I was doing, maybe give me a like, maybe give me a subscribe. Or not. It's all good. We're friends here. Or are we? So once again, thanks for watching Performance Check. I've been Rob, and I hope all of your performances are up to standard.